Every sensor beyond the wall has gone dark. Battle stations! Everyone with me! Now! Right now, if you peruse YouTube or Reddit or gaming websites or even just talk to your friends, you're generally going to find two very different schools of thought about how the recent Destiny 2 reveal went down. The first school of thought will tell you that Bungie absolutely nailed it here. They doubled down on the core player experience that millions of people already loved, while adding improvements such as new weapon types, new weapon slot system, new subclasses and new core player abilities. For those people, Destiny 2 was meant to be exactly this, more of what they already loved, and in that regard, Bungie delivered in spades. The other school of thought will say that Bungie, and Activision I suppose, really dropped the ball on this one. Citing a lack of new gameplay experiences, familiar mission structures, and technology that didn't evolve with the times, these people would argue that Destiny 2 is little more than DLC. Destiny 1.5, as Kotaku has now famously put it. But I think there is in fact a third view in all of this, and it's the one that I put to you today. It's a view that recognizes and appreciates the meaningful improvements that Bungie is bringing to the table, most notably matchmaking and a story-driven campaign worth our time, while also at the same time being bitterly disappointed by some key decisions that I fear will hold Destiny 2 back from being the game that we all hoped it would be. I'll admit that during the event I went from the highest of highs to some of the lowest lows as I began to speak to Bungie developers and confirm things like 30 FPS on consoles, no dedicated servers, no ranked PvP though this may change later, no cross save between PC and other platforms and no confirmed PC release date. I went on a huge journey over that 8 hours that I was at the event, from elated to cautious to concerned, and then a mix of all three at once. And I want to share that journey with you today. The spoiler alert is that I walked out of the experience excited for the future, but also feeling that we will continue to wait for Destiny's final form. That instead of arriving at the horizon we've all been chasing for the last three years, that that horizon has in fact moved further out. And I'll still keep playing and chasing that horizon because I love this damn game, but it would have been nice if this reveal was the promised land we'd all been hoping for, when clearly some big things are still missing. What makes a guardian a guardian? Destiny 2's reveal began in the most glorious of ways, unadulterated fan service through a pre-rendered cutscene that literally had people sitting near me in the audience on the verge of tears. The backstory of Zavala, the leader of the Vanguard, protector of humanity in this new age, hit all the right beats and built up his mythology perfectly. Even I cheered when I saw him clench his fist and leap into the air, ready to drop the greatest fist of havoc the audience had ever seen. The statement here from Bungie was clear. These are your heroes and we're gonna make sure you fucking love them this time around. If there's one thing that Destiny 1 got unquestionably wrong, it was its story. So it's little surprise to see that Destiny 2 puts this so front and center this time around. Bungie had invested years in building some of the best written lore in any video game, and now was the time to cash in through properly delivered pre-rendered cutscenes, scripted events, and also, it seems, an in-game grimoire as evidenced by this menu option allowing you to see the lore of an item by hitting the L2 button. It's clear that Bungie have learned a lot from the mistakes of Destiny 1 and are planning to deliver the story that we didn't get the last time around. And I think it's crucial to recognize just how important this is, not only to hardcore fans, but also to more casual players who are only looking to play through the campaign story and 
and then drop the game when they hit the end game. So many people fall into this bucket, and more than anything else, the inclusion of a story worth telling, on top of Destiny's already strong gunplay, is going to be something that is going to leave a good taste in people's mouths after the credits roll. So this one right here, the story and the campaign, from what we're seeing is a slam dunk success. If Bungie can maintain this character-focused storytelling throughout not only the base game, but also through the DLCs, then Destiny 2 is going to make a lot of people very happy. But that's the story. How are Bungie evolving and improving the core gameplay experience? In the recent review I did of Destiny, I said that Destiny offers the finest first-person shooter mechanics available on a console. And with over 200,000 views on that video now, not a single commenter has disagreed with that statement. And that is a very, very rare thing on the internet. Everyone knows that Destiny's gunplay is the best in the business, so it's little surprise that Bungie have done very little to change the ebb and flow of combat here in Destiny 2. Having spent around 5 hours with the game, I can tell you that the combat feels nearly indistinguishable from Destiny 1. In fact, if you had told me I was playing Destiny 1, I would have believed you. The weapons felt the same, the movement felt the same, abilities felt the same, it all just continues to feel as right as it did before. But while the core combat loop is untouched, the player classes have undergone some serious revision. It's not clear yet what the full suite of subclasses are, but we do know that the Titan will have at least the Striker, only now you can fist of havoc more than once, making this ability a roaming super. He'll also have a really awesome Captain America looking shield that he can use to both shoulder charge opponents, as well as throw it as a projectile that will bounce between enemies. I don't know about you guys, but I will certainly be maining Captain Titan come Destiny 2. We know that the Warlock will also have at least the Sun Singer spec, which grants you a flaming sword that rains down fiery destruction while gracefully gliding above your enemies' heads. And we know the Hunter retains the Gunslinger's Golden Gun class, though you can now fire off even more shots than before, and the Blade Dancer has been redesigned into what many are affectionately calling the Pole Dancer. Your blades are now a staff, and it seems to function the same way that it did before, it just looks a little cooler. But on top of this, each class now gets a special ability on a long cooldown, activated by holding the circle button. The Warlock will drop an AoE healing spot that increases recovery rate, the Titan will drop a barrier, very much like mobile cover in the Division or Mass Effect, and the Hunter will do a fancy shade step, similar to the ability we now have in the vanilla game. These abilities do have a fairly big impact on the flow of combat, with the Warlock ability in particular opening up some more strategic play options made possible by the AoE heal. I found it gave us a lot more confidence to stand our ground in both PvE and PvP, and I'm very interested to see how it will impact PvP balance in particular. But as welcome as these changes are, it must be said that many, myself included, are disappointed to not see a new class added. A new way to play the game would have been a good thing, and while I don't think that Bungie did anything wrong by not going down this path, and I'm fully aware of all of the implications on the lore that they have built over these years, I just think it would have been nice. I guess the broader concern that I have coming away from this is that as good as Destiny's combat is, I'd love to have seen the classes and ability structures evolve more to deliver something vastly new and different on top of what we already love. Certainly don't throw away the core gunplay that makes Destiny so magnificent, but look for some new and interesting ways to ideate further away from what we already knew. Believe me that you'll step into Destiny 2 and it's going to feel almost identical to Destiny 1 almost immediately. And while many people are going to passionately argue that that's the way it should be, many will argue that they'd want some new secret source added to the mix to make it feel even more special. And added to this, the PvE framework seems very much intact. We can expect new missions, new strikes, nightfalls, and one raid at launch. A lot of people are very disappointed that there's only one raid, but I'm really not. We don't know Bungie's content release schedule, so for all we know, we might have a new raid within two months of release, or maybe not, and we'd have to wait longer. I don't know, but being upset about the whole one raid thing seems pretty silly to me. Almost every MMO that launches as a sequel or as a major DLC drop has one new raid experience available, so I'm 
not sure what all the fuss is about. But I will say that I'm disappointed that there weren't more interesting endgame experiences to talk about. I love running strikes and raids and nightfalls as much as the next person, it's really awesome. But it would have been nice to have had something more. I don't know what to be honest, um, open world bosses, some competitive PvE activity where you race another team to complete the strike as fast as possible, whatever, I'm not sure. But here I feel that unless Bungie are regularly rolling out new content, this existing format is not going to retain the player base the same way that it did with vanilla because we've all kind of done it many times before. More than that, I don't see a new PvE endgame offering that is likely to retain players who don't like Destiny's existing loot grind structure. Anyone that's tried Destiny and has decided that the endgame wasn't for them probably isn't going to revisit that decision come Destiny 2. Though it must be said that the open world exploration elements and dungeons to explore and treasure maps and all that stuff that they're promising as part of the core campaign are certainly going to make campaign driven PvE focused players very happy. But those things weren't the most important changes made to the game. The most important change is one that's a hell of a lot less sexy but infinitely more meaningful. If you were to ask me what the single biggest, most important announcement made during the entire reveal was, I wouldn't say subclasses or weapons or story or whatever, I'd say matchmaking for raids, nightfalls and trials. And the reason why it was so important wasn't just because it was the number one feature that many people were asking for, but also because of how it was implemented. For years now, people have been yelling furiously at Bungie, asking for them to bring matchmaking into endgame activities. But the truth is, this would have been absolutely terrible. Doing hard content with matchmade people typically produces really negative, frustrating and toxic interactions. And I can tell you this from personal experience from dozens of games ranging from World of Warcraft to The Division. Bungie courageously stared down these requests and instead delivered something much, much better. Firstly, they're more deep integrating clans into the core UI, making it easier to form and then recruit people to them, while also adding things like custom banners that are going to appear on your gear, I think. But on top of that, there's also a very important feature called guided games. Here, those in clans looking to run nightfalls or raids or trials can advertise their group to solo players, or even those already in clans, but their clan buddies aren't online. So if my clan is running the new raid, but we're missing a sixth person, we can easily recruit another through an in-game matchmaking tool. The impact of this seemingly small addition cannot be overstated. Social connections are the number one driver of retention in games like this. If you have people to play with, you are going to keep playing. And this tool not only gives you people to play with whenever you want through the matchmaking, but it also makes it infinitely more likely that you'll join a clan yourself, which deepens your connection to the game and its community. If we all had an awesome clan full of people we enjoyed playing with, chances are we'd play the game long after we otherwise might have quit. Bungie know this and they've gone for the jugular with this brilliant win-win implementation of a feature that people have been crying out for for the longest time. I recently did a podcast with Arix and Bife, two Destiny YouTubers that I really recommend checking out if you haven't. I'll leave their details in the description below. And at the end of that, we were actually talking about our number one wish list item for Destiny 2. And I said that more than anything else, I wanted a vastly improved competitive PvP experience built on the foundation of dedicated servers for consoles and PC. In this regard, I, along with many others, were bitterly disappointed. Bungie announced that all PvP modes would go from the current 6v6 to 4v4, saying that uh, doing so pushes the game into a more competitive framework. Now this simply isn't true, as anyone who watches any sport ever will know, less people doesn't automatically mean less competitive. To be honest, I'd actually been hoping for the exact opposite of this for Destiny 2. I was really hopeful that Bungie would introduce some sort of large scale 10v10 or 16v16 mode that would have just been absolutely craziness. 
That would have been fun as hell, but it didn't come. Instead, we got less players, not more. Now, from what I'm hearing from the PvP scene, a lot of people really appreciate this because it makes combat feel much more strategic, more intimate, more intense, but that isn't necessarily for everyone, and not adding some larger scale, more free for, more fun focused PvP might be to the detriment of the game in future. It remains to be seen whether or not this change is good for Destiny or not, or it simply serves to make the game more manageable from a technology perspective. I don't know yet, and I will absolutely reserve judgment on this until I see how it plays out in future. To their credit though, Bungie did commit to providing better tools to make moment-to-moment -moment decisions, such as UI elements that highlights when an enemy has their super up or has heavy ammo, which is now called power ammo. Things like this allow us to more strategically play around the strengths of our opponents, so they are unquestionably better and I'm really glad to see them brought in. But the biggest gut punch for me and for many others was the announcement that there would be no dedicated servers for PvP on either console or PC. I spoke to Bungie staff on the floor about this and while some of them wouldn't comment on it, some of them confirmed it to be true. I tweeted this out as soon as I'd heard and later interviews would further confirm this publicly, though Bungie didn't offer an explanation as to why they would go down this path. For those unfamiliar with what this means, dedicated servers are generally servers located in specific locations designed to provide a better connectivity experience. The alternative peer-to-peer -peer, is now an out-of-date and vastly inferior way to manage PvP matchmaking and server provision. It's why you get the horrendous red bar warriors in the current Crucible, and the number one reason why For Honor, a brilliant game in many regards, ultimately collapsed as a game. Unless your matchmaking and in-game performance is good, people will not play your game no matter how much fun it is. And this is especially concerning on the PC for two reasons. Firstly, PC crowds just don't put up with this shit. They just don't. They've been playing on dedicated servers for like 20 years across pretty much every game that's popular, and they will simply turn up their nose at anything that doesn't provide them a respectable matchmaking and in-game experience. I honestly worry that the PC community will not thrive in the way that we had all hoped on the back of this decision alone. Secondly, and most importantly, dedicated servers greatly increase the ability of the developer to monitor cheating that's going on and to intervene quickly and without hesitation. Because data is flowing more regularly between the player and the dedicated servers, they can more easily track when someone is doing something they shouldn't be. This capability is greatly undermined with peer-to-peer -peer matchmaking, and the one question I still have on my mind is how is Bungie going to safeguard the integrity of the PvP experience from shameless hackers? I don't know the answer to this yet, but I know that I'm more concerned than ever since the announcement of no dedicated servers. And I think this lack of ambition with regards to the technological aspects of Destiny 2 is a consistent theme. The console version of the game is locked at 30 FPS, with Bungie saying that the PS4 Pro just didn't have the CPU power to push out 60 FPS. It remains to be seen whether Xbox Scorpio will have the chance to run at 60 FPS, or if the need to maintain parity with other Xbox players will stop this from happening. I'm also advised that the Scorpio CPU is only about 10% more powerful than we're seeing on the PS4 Pro anyway. So if they couldn't get it running on the PS4 Pro because of its CPU, I wonder whether or not they're gonna have much more luck with the Xbox Scorpio. PC players can of course get their 60 FPS fix if their rig is beefy enough, but console players will miss out. And in 2017, that just feels a little shitty. Taken in aggregate, I return to a similar point I made about PvE earlier. I'm not seeing an evolution of the PvP experience that is going to be more likely to welcome or retain new players, or even better engage existing Destiny fans like myself who enjoy PvP but cannot commit to it because the technology and competitive framework just isn't there for me to consider it worth my time. I wanted Destiny 2 to be the Halo 2 moment. When Halo 2 launched, it revolutionized console gaming through a brilliant Xbox Live enabled experience that people had never really seen before. And with a ranked competitive framework, which became a new benchmark for first person shooters everywhere. We got neither of these advancements here with Destiny 2. And I will say that I'm more than a little heartbroken that Destiny 2's PVP is shaping up to be exactly the same as Destiny 1's.
I think one of the things that we lose sight of when we talk about a game or play a game like Destiny is that not everyone plays it for the same reasons or in the same way. We sort of assume that uh, what I want from Destiny must be the same as what the next person wants. But that really couldn't be further from the truth with most games, especially a game with the broad appeal that Destiny has. I've always imagined that there were three broad categories of Destiny players. Those that are really in it for the campaign only and have no interest in grinding the endgame after that point. There's those that do plan on grinding the PvE endgame after that. And then there are those that play Destiny because they really want to enjoy the PvP experience. For these three different groups, I think each of them can take away very different things from this event. For those just looking to enjoy Destiny 2's campaign, the reveal was a huge win. There's unquestionably going to be a good campaign filled with interesting characters and likely plenty to do after the campaign ends as they seek to explore and unlock side quests and dungeons peppered throughout Destiny's new worlds. But for the hardcore PvE crowd, I suspect the takeaway here is that more of the same is what's on the menu. And if that's what you're into, great. But if you wanted something new and interesting to evolve the endgame experience, then that seems to be lacking at this point. For PvP players, the reveal was unquestionably a disappointment. No dedicated servers and 30 FPS on console will continue to make Destiny 2 feel like a bit of light fun rather than a true competitive experience. And it's likely that the PC community in particular will be deeply unimpressed with what Bungie is offering here. For me, I straddle all three of these categories, which is why this reveal was so bittersweet for me. More Destiny is unquestionably a good thing. It's an amazing game, and I'll keep playing it no matter what. And in this regard, you know, more of the same actually makes me really happy. And digging into the stories of the characters I love, and making it easier for me to meet people while playing this game, these are all awesome things. But as someone who loves video games, I'm constantly on the search for new experiences that show or teach me something new. And so many of the sequels I've played over my lifetime have done that. They found a way to honor their heritage while delivering something new and interesting and breakthrough and revolutionary. Right now, I'm not feeling that from Destiny. I'm feeling the excitement I felt when I looked at its expansion packs, but not the excitement that I hope to feel when I imagined what its sequel could have been. And I suppose that so much of that comes from the gut-wrenching disappointment I feel about the lack of innovation in PvE and PvP and in particular, the lack of 60 FPS on consoles and dedicated servers across all platforms. I love what I saw and I will play the shit out of it, but I'll be the first to admit that I wanted more. However, it is really important to keep things in perspective. The game isn't out yet, so there is of course a chance that there are many other exciting things on the way that are yet to be announced. Either for the release of the game or for the expansions, which are certainly coming sooner rather than later. We can expect those to both drop within the first 12 months. As I said at the start of this video, Destiny has a famously long journey ahead of it, and nothing I've seen here in this reveal makes me think I won't be there for every step of that journey. It just would have been nice if this step in the journey was a little bit larger than the last one.